In this movie, I'll show you the improvements to the offset tool in Alias 2011. The first change is a more consistent layout in the offset tool control window. If I compare Alias 2010 with 2011, the auto recalc button is now with the rest of the control options at the bottom, and the curve on surface setting is now with the main options, making it more consistent with other tools in the interface. The second change is to do with the selection workflow. If I use the offset tool on this beer bottle, and I choose just the outline curves, the next new feature is that I can now remove or add curves using the shift key while I'm doing the offset, whereas previously I would have had to exit the tool and start again. So now I can just type in my offset value and build the curves. The next change is that although my original curves aren't grouped, the offset now is grouped, which makes it much easier to put onto a layer or to use to build surfaces. And these two improvements apply when you offset both curves and surfaces. The next changes I want to show you apply only to surfaces and I'll use this glass coffee jar as an example. It's symmetrical, so I'll just look at one quarter. And if I take a look at the surface normals, you can see that they're randomly facing inwards and outwards. And also, the surfaces aren't grouped together. I can pick them individually. But despite this, when I use the new offset tool on surfaces, they're all offset in a unified direction, and I can control that direction by flipping the arrow. And as before with the curves, I can shift pick surfaces to remove or add them to my selection, and the remaining surfaces are unified again, so I can pick my direction and type in the offset. And again, even though my original surfaces weren't grouped, the offset surfaces are grouped, which makes them much easier to work with, particularly on complex models. In packaging projects like this, where I often need to model the inner surfaces for rendering, these changes make the workflow much quicker and more reliable. This faucet model has different components. There's a tap handle, the main body, and the wall mounting. When I use offset on all these surfaces together, the surfaces are unified per component and I can individually choose the direction of the offset for each of them, as they're clearly shown in different colours. Now it does this by looking at the construction option settings, at this topology distance value, and here it's set to 0 0.02. And if I now have a look at the gap between two of the components, you can see that it's 0 0.05, which is bigger than the topology distance. So the offset tool recognises these two surfaces as being separate and shows the offset previews in different colours, each with their own arrow to control the offset direction. If I now change my construction options so that the topology distance is much bigger, then my gap of 0 0.05 won't be recognised as a break between the surfaces and the offset tool will see them as a single object and will unify the directions and show a single colour and a single arrow. So now if I choose the tighter setting and offset the surfaces, I can choose the directions for each set of surfaces. And I'll take the default offset of 1mm to create the metal wall thickness. And again, the offset surfaces are grouped together to make it easier for me to organise the model. I probably won't intentionally offset multiple groups that often, but even if I have an unfinished model that may have some gaps in it, the offset unification will manage the groups of surfaces properly. So to summarise, the offset tool now has a better window layout and you can now add and remove objects during the offset process. 
The resulting offset curves or surfaces are now grouped. And when working with surfaces, the surface normals are now unified, making the offset workflow much quicker and more reliable.